everybody and thank you for joining the richard listen show here coming to you with another exciting quarantine edition of the richard listen show and i get to record from outdoors and i get to smell the fresh sound of uh the wind and smells of barbecue so that's the exciting version for me of having my little outdoor recording studio here uh and today we have another exciting guest and friend from my past who's both a motivator and inspiring figure and an athlete herself her name is jenna finkbeiner she's uh skilled and knowledgeable nutrition sports and fitness coaching. She is uh, an ambassador to Lululemon, the Body Energy Club, Box Raw from UK, York Athletics, Shop CBD, Celsius Official, and GNS Fight Supply. She's um, a boxer and a trainer, and she's here to deliver her motivation to us. Again, please check me out on Instagram at Richard Listens and patreon.com slash Richard Listens for advanced content and uh, to support the show. Thank you, everybody. Again, shout out to Injitsu if you haven't tried it already, home workouts with MMA fighters and opportunities to interact with some of the sport's best. And Impact Dental Designs, supportive mount gear for your soccer, football, boxing, or MMA fighting event. Please check out our promos for these wonderful products. And if you haven't tried them already, uh, ask me for a promo link, and we'll get that to you as well. Without further ado, here is Janet Finkbeiner. Thanks for having me. Thank you for making the time. You're you're a hard uh, gal to catch, not in a, your fitness class from like 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> Till those days. Yeah. Yeah. Those days, man. <laughs> Has it shifted at all with the with the quarantine? Is it a little bit more normalcy? Yeah, you know, it's it's funny how normal this is becoming now. Um, but I have to say I'm I'm grateful to not be waking up at 4 30 in the morning anymore. Um I think we had, you know, we had like a, a small group of people that were still, you know, going about their normal, their normal work day. So um, but in general, most people were not ready to wake up for 5 a.m. to do a class at 5.30 with me. So I'm grateful for a little reprieve from, from that kind of a schedule. But still, it's been, it's been a lot busier than I could have ever imagined. Yeah, I mean, how, how surprised were you by this transition or how much were some of these changes ones that you were already going to make in terms of, I, I know you're, you're working on your own branding, I know you're delivering classes, you already lead classes uh, from studio gyms, um, so how much of this was stuff that was kind of in the back of your brain, stuff you might move towards doing anyway? Yeah, um, you know, I think, I think with Instagram Live, having been around a while, you know, definitely that had been a platform, not just myself, but a lot of fitness, um, well, not even fitness, like cooking. A lot of people that have a social media platform and are active on Instagram were using that. So that was like the comfort zone, you know? It's like, okay, I can do these live classes and interact with people, and I've been doing that all along. But the Zoom pivot in terms of private training and group training, um, that, that was totally different. And I remember the first couple times I had to do it, I have this whiteboard over here with, it was the most detailed red, like dry erase marker, step-by-step step you could possibly imagine. And I was really, I was really nervous because it took me out of my comfort zone and my comfort zone is leading classes, but really in an, in a, in person engaging way that way and taking me into this world of technology that I'm not super familiar with. And so it was definitely really, really challenging. I would have never, even thought that there was possibility there. And now that I'm here, it seems so like, but of course, you know, I had a girl from Kelowna do my class this morning, you know, Kelowna's up in Canada. So like, oh, wow. that, that would have never happened. Um, otherwise, so now that I'm here in it, I'm like, wow, of course, this, of course, this was possible. Um, but sometimes it takes something crazy to, to just push you into the deep end to realize you can swim, you know? Yeah, I mean, do, do they give you a little bit of help with the camera? I mean, to be managing like the, like you said, we're joking about the Zoom room, seeing yeah. all the faces, and then also modeling the exercises. <laughs> you should see the setup I have. Like, I have, um, you know, basically for us, like, you know, we were trying to, us being studio, of course, we were trying to find out what the best possible quality we could offer people, um, given that 
you know, I think everyone can agree it, it's nice in some ways, but it's not the ideal case scenario. So you're like, how can we give people the best possible experience? And one of that was obviously quality of visual. And in terms of if we're, if we're comparing, you know, a Mac desktop with a, with a camera to a, an iPhone 11 or an iPhone 11 Pro, you're like, okay, you know, the phone has to be the main camera. So I basically invite myself into my meetings hosted off a Mac desktop. I've got my camera as the main camera um, and a, a Bluetooth uh, earphone hooked up to my phone um, and the computer's hosting the meeting. And then I have an HDMI to a TV so I can blow everybody up and I can see, you know, who's cheating their reps or who needs a little help or, you know, it. and I think that that's honestly <clears throat> something that makes it really special is me being able to, to call somebody out and say, hey, great work or, you know, try to roll those shoulders back a little bit more and and all of a sudden there's that personal touch point and you kind of forget that you know you're in your own living room yeah i, I did a class with uh i guess cy gentleman from vancouver is he from uh yeah. this weekend and i was all alone in a room and i was like in my head i was cleaning the room while i was doing it and i got called yeah. out i was like laughing i was like that's it that's all you need is what getting called out once your reps go up <laughs> You're totally, <laughs> totally. Or you get spotlighted and you become the main screen and you're like, oh no. So, so yeah, I think it's, it's those little, those little hacks that make it feel more personal, you know? So does this, does this uh, create a desire to like record videos or, or do other things with media? It, it's interesting. Like it, it definitely piques my interest. I would have to say that this element of um, a life of technology still isn't my, it's not my go-to and it's something that still, it gives me like performance anxiety because, you know, I've been in situations where, you know, Zoom, is, it's, it's 9 a.m. in the morning and that's an extremely popular time and Zoom gets overloaded and I get kicked off or, and I feel like when you are in person with people and something happens, it's so easy to switch gears, recover, um, speak in a way that just recovers the situation. It feels very seamless, but with technology, sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm counting the seconds until I'm allowed to reload back up onto the meeting and, and, and that stuff really stresses me out. And uh, it's so I funny. I've had podcasts that have disconnected. And so like yes. if you're watching it, you'll be like, wow, Richard went from his backyard to San Francisco to Hawaii. Yes. And it's always with like your most influential podcast guest ever that you were like, please don't happen now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so I, I definitely, it definitely freaks me out a little bit, but I think um, I'm, I'm flying solo, you know, like uh, CY has a, a little bit of tech support up in Vancouver, but for, for me, I'm, I fly solo in here. So it's, it's all on me to, you know, quickly recover or uh, troubleshoot in some way. So I think if you had, like, if you wanted to go big, you'd have a, like a studio set up, you'd have the lighting you'd have everything, you'd have a tech support person, you'd have another backup computer as a host or something like, I think there would be a way to really, to really make it slick if that was your mainstay. Um, mm. So for me, I'm just doing the best with what I've gotten and, and it's knock on wood been more or less stress-free, more or less. <laughs> Yeah. And, 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 and you talk about like, this is really like the gift that you have is to be in your craft, to own fitness and to be personal with people. And, and so what's that like for you to be away from your students? Um, you know, I actually thought it would be much more challenging than it has become. I, I, you know, I really thrive off of that class environment and I really thrive off the energy of people. And, and I can, I feel like I can just feel the energy. Like I can feel its pulse and I know how to, and how to, um, you know, alter it or change it and using just like a specific song choice or a specific word at the right time. Like, I feel like I'm right in the current usually. So that was my biggest concern is like, well, how do I sit in that current? Like I'm used to, um, and have my finger on that pulse. But I, I found that it, it, it wasn't really too, too much different. Like I can, I mean, it is in a lot of ways, but for some reason I, I was able to find my current and really, um, I really enjoy it. And, and it surprises me how much I do really enjoy it. Um, so, you know, it, it, it wasn't as, as bad. Like, I don't want to say, a, a, you know, bad, but it didn't totally throw me for a loop like I expected it to. And uh, I was really pleasantly surprised. And, and I've been able to, I feel like have a lot more fun with, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I, I'm a hobby DJ, so I'll, I'll go and 
get my turntables out and I'll create a custom mix like the night before I'll play it in class and I already know what's coming and I know how the reaction is going to feel and 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 so I'll find things or, or or I'll dig into words of inspiration or things to say at the right time with that right music drop and I feel like I can still create that energy so that makes me feel a lot better because the experience is everything to me like how someone is feeling on the other side is and I feel like I have an even bigger challenge now when I have people in their living room looking at the dust on the floor and oh man I should just like you know Swiffer and that <laughs> pillow is not my straight. house <laughs> right and all these things that are, that are distracting you I have an even harder job and I feel really I feel very proud that I, I you know I feel like I've been able to still tap into um what makes that experience special for people so it really I mean it wasn't as 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 challenging or as fish out of water as I really thought I, I, I would be. So. No, oh, that's amazing. And you just tie it in there. So many interests and how much creativity and work goes into creating motivation. It's true, you know, and, and, and I, motion creates motivation, right? So, you know, you really have to start the process first in order to feel motivated. It's really hard to come cold and just feel super charged up. Like it's that it's, you know, after you finish your first, you know, push up where you're like, okay, I think I can do this, but it, it's not before that push up. And I think for a lot of people that that motion or that action comes first. And even as an instructor, there are days where you're like, I don't, I don't really feel like doing this. Like, I don't feel like I have enough for me, never mind spreading that out for others. But the moment the music goes on and the lights come up or whatever, you, you know, you realize that like, okay, this motion created motivation for me. Um, yeah. So, so it's where do you find me. it? I want to ask that. I know, I know your mom is a big, you know, big part of your life. I mean, where do you, I mean, to be, like you said, even when you're like in your downtime in the physical gym space, right? People are like, give me some more motivation or give me a tip or mm -hmm. give me a recovery strategy. Where do you find your own motivation and, and, where do you where do you find your recovery it's uh motivation I, I definitely think comes for me in, in three key pieces um one is my my like important relationships like i i definitely feel like i'm vibing at my highest frequency as a coach and as a, as a person or an influencer whatever you want to call it when my my key relationships are are really in lockdown and everything's harmonious. You know, you all of a sudden just come into things with a little bit of less baggage. And uh, you know, the second thing for me is really music. Music has been a huge part of my life for, for many, many years. I played music professionally uh, before I did anything else. And uh, so I like to utilize music um, to create an atmosphere and an experience. Um, and I think it's so powerful. And uh, the third thing I, I would say is the other people, you know, my, my being able to feel that I taught somebody something or I can see someone improving real time or I can see someone pushing through even though I know they're exhausted, those things really fire me up and fill me up. And uh, so, you know, th those are the three kind of key things for me that, that make me feel motivated to continue. And then recovery is something that's, you know, challenging. You go through life, sometimes you feel like, hey, you know, you're, you're just on another, you're on cloud nine, you're on another level, you don't need it. And I feel like I am one of those people that has a tendency to ride that wave a little longer than I should without recognizing some small signs along the way. And then I'll have, you know, a few days of the week where I can barely lift my head up. I'm so exhausted. So I've really tried to learn that those balance strategies a lot more. But when I am tapping into, you know, my need for recovery, it truly is just having a day of, of physical rest, um, which was very hard for me to accept. You know, in my early 20s, I was like, you know, thought I could just <laughs> keep continue. going. You know, you think you can just keep pushing and pushing and pushing and, and, and you can. And I think I, I think I was like 28 years old when I started fighting again. I was like, okay, this, uh, this rest thing is no joke. And to perform at, a high, at your highest level it's so crucial. So I'll, I'll always take a day of physical rest, if not two days. And when I'm training very intensely for something, I'll take like three days rest in a week. Um, and yeah, then, so, so where are you at now? You, you, you're, you compete with boxing. Mm -hmm. Um, how did you come to that? And, and how has that been now with you're in a quarantine? Are you able to still train? Oh man, it, it, you know, it's been a bummer, but I think, uh, I've been able to get some time in with my, my coach, um, and you know, there's, there's really no, there's no goal on the horizon. So the, the quality and the level of training, 
um, especially coming off of, you know, we had, there was about two, three weeks where I didn't lift my arms uh, to put on boxing gloves, you know, so it, that, that was really tough. And uh, I definitely felt like a really big disconnect with something that was so key in my identity and a piece of what I really enjoy doing. Um, and, you know, there's, there's no fight scheduled on the near horizon. Boxing USA kind of just keeps throwing us little bones here and there, like, you know, here's your weekly workout. And, and it's so hard when you're not grinding in the boxing gym to really feel the, the motivation to get to that intensity. So, it, you know, it definitely has been a, a, an off time, but I guess you could zoom out of that and say maybe that's for the best. And maybe you wouldn't have given yourself that if you weren't forced to. So I'm trying to see the, you know, the, the positive in it. Um, but I have been grateful enough to have some people in my life that I've been kind of quarantining with that have uh, some, some heavy bags and been able to spend some time with my coach. So it's been, it's been good. I'm, I'm getting all corny in this, you know, I gave a presentation called Quarantunity and now, and now I'm like, is that your quarantine? You know? It's my quarantine. <laughs> yeah, I've been very, very fortunate to have a, a quarantine that allowed me to continue doing a lot of things that I love, which I think has been key for just like mental health, pushing through um, this bizarre time. You have to have the things that really fill you up. And for me, boxing is one of them. Um, yeah. So I saw part of your, your quarantine therapy was, did you, did you foster or adopt an animal or? We did. We, uh, <laughs> we adopted a, a puppy. Um, she is the coolest, such a cool, I've been, a, I've been a dog owner in the past. And um, when I met my husband, he had a cat and I was really unsure about this cat life. Like I, I'm like, I don't know if I'm a cat person. <laughs> um, and I've now recognized that people that have, like all people that think their cats are great compare their cats to dogs. So I've always been like that person that's like, oh, my cat's so cool. She's just like a dog. So, uh, you know, going back to being a dog owner has been really fun because I've actually never done the puppy thing before. Um, so all of its challenges, all of its upsides, and then all of its moments of deep breathing and patience required. Um, it's, it's been all in all very, very positive. She's a beautiful little Belgian Malinois shepherd cross. So if you know anything about the breed, they are highly, highly, highly intelligent. So we have, and very athletic. So we have our, our work cut out for us. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of thing? Like figuring out where you hide things and things like that? Like how does the intelligence show up? These dogs are incredible. So my puppy is 10 weeks old. She already knows how to sit, stay, come, sit pretty, spin around. She has figured out how to open Ziploc bags. Like she is <laughs> phenomenal. Yes. Um, and you know, she already knows when she's done something wrong. Sometimes she tries to run away and hide before you can get her. And she's um, very, very clever. But you know, that whole puppy stage, she, she's, she's uh, very, very well behaved. I would say, I think we're super lucky. And I think we started training her early. So she's starting to, to pick up things quite a bit, but this breed are the breed that you generally see with like military, um, police. Uh, if it's not a German shepherd, it will usually be a Belgian Malinois. They skydive, they tightrope walk, they skateboard, they surf. They're absolutely incredible, <laughs> incredible dogs. <laughs> So do you get a little bit of a pass with the early morning wake up to take the dog out because you're training early? My, uh, it, it definitely, <laughs> we've definitely missed out on a little sleep, but my husband's been uh, taking the brunt of it, seeing uh, he's not working right now with uh, the, you know, the COVID-19. So he's not working. So he's definitely been able to lose a little bit more sleep than, than I have been able to. So we've been shifting off. <laughs> <laughs> and what's that like for him having you be out there so much for for others I mean is that a hard negotiation in, in terms of understanding how much output you give on a daily basis yeah. yeah you know he's been a really big supporter of me from day one and he very quickly kind of dove into my lifestyle to understand what this is all about I don't think he'd really ever met anyone that did what I did or was like me. And I say like me because I'm very, very, very physically active and sort of um, like extremely driven. I can be very tunnel, tunnel vision. Um, so, you know, he dove in and tried to be a part of my life as much as he could um, physically getting into fitness in ways he never had before. So that was super helpful because he was able to real time see what it was like to, you know, do 12 hours in my shoes. And, uh, 
you know, I, I definitely struggle with them. Um, you know, having enough physical and, and sometimes mental and emotional energy at the end of the day. Um, and, and, you know, he's, he's extremely accepting and understanding of that and really finds ways to, um, help me, you know, little things like I, uh, I'm a huge clean freak as well, and I'm not home as much so that, you know, he knows that that's important to me. So he's really taken on that burden, um, to make sure that when I'm coming home, I'm not looking around and immediately stressed looking out for dust again. bunnies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Except when I'm working out, I'm trying to work out at home. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm in the chair. He didn't get into the chair because I like, you know, no one quite cleans like you clean, you know what I'm saying? But you know, I appreciate well, this has been great that. because I've been getting grilled. So I, because we, you know, there's been no support. My cleaning is being micromanaged. I had to learn how to like, uh, fill in, uh, caulking, paint a door. Wow. So, I, I mean, I'm sure if you, if you inspected my work, it, it might need another once over, but you know, uh, there's, there's that next level <laughs> that I think that like, if you want something done a certain way, you just got to do it yourself because you can, you can put that on somebody else, but I feel like it'll never be good enough. You always have to be like, okay, I see how well you did. And it didn't meet my expectation because my expectation is probably way too extreme. So I've accepted that. But it's been the gift of the quarantine. The more you're around people, you get to see how they do things rather than just hearing the expectation. You're like, oh, okay. You know, I got to yeah. scrub, I got to scrub that pot, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's exactly right. And you know, I think it, it helps him feel, you know, like he's, he's got, uh, you know, more of a purpose too. like he, it's been a really tough couple of years for us. Um, moving to the States from Canada, you know, there's, there's processes to everything because of my visa, he's got a lot of uh, freedom. He can work anywhere he wants, do anything he wants. He can have as many jobs as he wants, but you know, there's a, there's like a four month transition period where you get, you actually physically receive your work permit. Mm. Um, and of course it's by mail. Um, so that's always slow. Yeah. And then, you know, it was, it was hard for him to be unable to do anything for four months and four turned into six because, you know, you're just not mentally in a great place. And, um, you know, so by the end of last year, we started to come to a place where we were starting to feel better about our situation and he was feeling better about his situation and then this hit so we're kind of back to square one which has been really challenging uh for him yeah. but amazing i mean really show role flexibility and to build these qualities in a relationship it's hard you know that that when you're vulnerable and you really have to support each other you see what a relationship is is really built on uh Absolutely you know, when things are really uncomfortable. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we have done it all like in the last, you know, two and a half, three years, we got married, um, moved countries. I lost someone very important to me like a week before my wedding, um, you know, went through unemployment, went through doubt, went through fear, went through like the worst financial year of our life. Like we have packed everything in that how is challenging pretty much as soon as we said i do it's been it's been incredible actually to look back and go wow you know i think we've actually probably overcome some of the hardest things that a new relationship can overcome uh already so yeah. <laughs> i guess like there's a silver lining and who's motivating you i mean right because when you're going through all those things and giving so much to so many right um where do you draw from um, I, uh, it's, you know, I think like I, I, I draw from David for comfort, my husband in a lot of ways, like he's very comforting, but I have a, a nasty habit of being, um, I, he calls me bro -y. like I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm a bro. So I, I often don't really express my, myself if I'm not going through like you know if I'm if I'm in a conflict or I'm exhausted sometimes I don't express myself or I don't express myself in the best ways so that's definitely been something I've had to learn you know being in a relationship with someone else and um I find uh I always just have this kind of fitness attitude to life like you know a little taste of sympathy but mostly just okay Push let's through go. It. come on let's go you know and and so when he's going through, you know, the things that he was going through that were really challenging for him, um, I had to learn to not be like, okay, well, you know, 
handle it, you know, yes. and, and be sympathetic. So sometimes I, I think that I, I, I just assume that I can just do everything for myself and I can just, you know, push through and just bro, bro through it, if you will. <laughs> so uh, I definitely, I definitely had to learn to communicate that a little bit more. And, and then, you know, apart from that, my, my mom and my friends are, are just amazing. I have the best, best group of people that are close to me that really hold me to my highest standard, but then also are there for me anytime I need, I need them. You know, if I need to be vulnerable, they're there. So I'm very fortunate with my relationships. That's beautiful. And I was reading your, your intro that you're, you know, uh, ambassador for Lululemon, uh, Body Energy Club, Box Raw, so many, uh, different sponsorships and GNS fight supply, Celsius official shop CBD. Do they um, provide support to you or does that, uh, how do you wear that crown with, with now, especially the pressures on social media, like posting and that, you know, does it, does it give you support knowing more people are connected to you or can it be an extra yeah. tax? You know what? It's, um, it's actually been incredible. Like I, I have been so fortunate to work with such amazing brands and, you know, we, you know, we did go through a, a financial hardship, um, last year, you know, with just being a single income and moving to a new country and all the things, the challenges that went with that. So little things like receiving a pair of boxing gloves in the mail, all the way from someone in New York city that thought I was cool was so important to me like you know first off i have a obsession with mail like i just love getting mail <laughs> even if i ordered it like and it's amazon and i know it's kind of <laughs> so excited. what's better than that it's the best. <laughs> my, my grandfather and i still send each other letters so i love 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 mail um so, you know, being connected with these brands and feeling like I had a community that- You know what, I have to tell you, I have to tell you, Jen, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I'm going from after our podcast to send two letters and I've decided in this quarantine to put uh, a book, like a book that I read or inspired me and send it to a friend and write a thank you note in there. You know, like Love use that. this quarantine, you know, just like- you can't yeah. see him. You can't take him out for a beer for his 40th birthday, but you can send him a book. Yeah. Um, and, and I, and I want to tell you, my father, God, God rest his soul, passed last summer. I know you're aware. And uh, his best friend, until the day he died, every week, even when they were in New York together, they would write each other letters. He would send him like a clip out from the New York Times or something. Yep. It made his day. So, so powerful that you say that. It's really special, you know, it's it, like the mail you are expecting and the mail you aren't expecting. I think it's really special and, and it makes you feel connected to a community beyond, you know, my husband and my, my coworkers and the people I see all the time. It's like, there's a, there's a community beyond that. And, and yeah, I've, I've had massive, massive amounts of support from all the brands that I've worked with, just the, you know, and, and, and in that Instagram world, it's, it's a weird world, you know, to have the affirmation i think that you know we all we all like to have um from brands that you feel that you align with or you also you know think that hey that's a cool brand and then that cool brand reaches out to you you're like okay i'm doing something right i am maybe i am cool you know so it, it, it was, uh, yeah, it's, it's been awesome. And Lululemon has been there for me in so many ways. This, I've been, I was an ambassador in Vancouver um, for a year before I moved to LA. And now I'll be going on my second year here in LA as Beverly Hills ambassador. And that, that community of people is just incredible. How is uh, Lululemon managing with, uh, with the COVID-19? Are they? Yeah, you know, they, they've had their, their challenges, but um, I think the company is um was strong enough financially that actually i've seen them do more giving than anything so they they have really really just been um you know giving lululemon funded small business uh like grants to to even a friend of mine's business back home you know she was she's also an ambassador so to have to not just be an ambassador for a brand you know wear the pants and you know teach a couple classes but to have that brand support you in your most desperate hour um that says a lot you know so they they have really put themselves in a position there where they could be a help to their community and that's truly what the brand stands for so you know i think i'm sure they've had their hardships but all i've seen is is the giving 
Yeah, and what a truly, you know, like refreshing model that they mm -hmm. allow a certain amount of time for each of their employees to go exercise on a weekly, daily, you know, basis. Yeah. And that that model for, you know, um, wanting your, your employees to be healthy. And, and so we hope they, they continue to be successful through all of this. Yeah. 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 And it's, and it's not just even physical health. They put a lot of, um, you know, workshops and books and practices and, um, you know, pre meeting rituals and things like that to, to make sure people are emotionally and mentally healthy as well. Um, yeah. So I, I, I major respect for their brand. It's an honor to, to represent them. Yeah. So what's next for you when 20, when, when, when this crisis ends, when we go back to normal, will you continue still? Will there be a hybrid of uh, zoom meetings? Uh, are you launching your own brand? Uh, you know, if yeah. you're allowed to say, yeah. I think um, there's definitely going to be a hybrid. Like I think given how successful it has been, I think we'd be crazy not to incorporate that. And I, I also think the landscape uh, for gyms and, you know, fitness, fitness uh, providers has changed entirely. There may very well be people who are not comfortable coming back into the gym for quite some time. So to be able to offer a service platform for them as well, I think is crucial. So that's definitely something that we are, are you know, looking at making some even physical changes to the space in order to allow uh, that to happen um, and, and continue to provide high quality. But, you know, I'm really, I'm one of those people that, you know, this is like obviously a can of worms, but I am not afraid of COVID-19. I cannot wait to hug somebody. You know, if that means me getting a test and then, you know, knowing that that's, that's fine. Like I respect the, the measures in place to make sure people are, are, are healthy and functioning optimum. But I, I am one of those, like, I cannot wait to be face to face with someone and train with them again. And um, you know, go and crack someone's form and, you know, feel their sweaty t-shirt and then wash my hands after. Like that's, <laughs> that's the world that I've lived in and grown in. And, and I, I, I don't, I don't fear that. I think that there's a lot to learn from this. And I think there's a lot of things that we recognize we need to take more seriously as, as people. And that's fantastic. Um, but I, I can't wait to get back to as close to as normal as, as possible as a, someone who works in a, a service industry that very much is about, you know, interpersonal connection. Um, it's been, uh, it's been dearly missed, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm working on my own website right now. Um, just as kind of like a, you know, aside to, to the other things that I do on, on, on social media and, uh, you know, just trying to be, I'm just trying to like, you know, be, do this whole, I've, I feel like I've sort of just dabbled in the idea of having a personal brand and just kind of leaning on Instagram. And, and I'm like, you know what, I need to, I need to start a website and just try to make that a little bit bigger of a, uh, a footprint and then see what happens. You know, you don't know until you try again, like I said, I think you can tell, like, it really comes from me not being a, growing up with really like a lot of technology as part of my life. Like I was the kid playing sports and running around in the field. Like I never video gamed or anything like that. So growing into a world of technology, I'm trying to grow with it as much as I can. I'm making oh, myself sound us. like I can't even send a text message. No, <laughs> all of us. No, I mean, I've been challenged to like put out something on TikTok this month and I'm like going to have to go like ask 11 year olds for help. Yes, I, I had the same. Happen, I was going to hire a kid in my son's class who's 11 to edit my podcast that he had experience because yeah. they're, they're doing this. And that's part of the why I love this medium is because it will exist in audio in perpetuity and mm -hmm. people can listen to it while they're running, driving, like this yeah. is going to be with future generations. So, but just like I know for my mom, like I, she used to ask me to like get her on the AOL.com. I don't know if you had that in Canada, like whatever the dial up yeah. was, you know, yeah. like, but now in, in the quarantine, she's doing like two Mahjong Zoom games per day. Like she's got yeah. thrust into a whole new other level as well. It's crazy. <laughs> I know like I, I, it is crazy. I never thought I would, I would be here, but um here it's hard are. to be great it's hard to be an expert who's putting so much energy to be in front of people and be a people connected you're you're having to like track how many nervous systems in the room to make sure they're mm -hmm. not uh yeah you know, who's pushing themselves a the maximum who could be you know hurting an old injury and yeah. to be like fully your voice can't waver at all <laughs> at all I mean, there's so many things 
there's so many things that are just so natural. So like to add in technology, it is, it's like, you know, I don't know if we're meant to be doing all things at the same time. It's it's true. I well, have you ever heard the, I think it's called the two and a half rule. Um, the two and a half rule is you can only be excellent at two things. So you add in a third and you're going to be half as good as you were at one of them, you know? And I truly believe that like, you know, and, and to be honest, I'm the type of person that is so focused on the people in front of me in that hour, hour by hour every day that I, I don't even really watch the news or read the news a lot because I find that the mental stimulus it gives me is usually a, a negative one. And if I try to come into an hour or a class where my primary focus is like, you know, building up the dopamine and serotonin and, and, and help, helping people get to a place where they can physically crush themselves, it's, I, I can't let a lot of that pass my filter. So I am the type of person that's very, you know, tunnel vision in that sense. So this has definitely been one other thing that I'm thinking about juggling, uh, you know, in the mix. So it, it, yeah, it's been interesting. It's been It's talented. the power of focus. And I'll, and I'll piggyback on what you said. I know it's like last night we did a, a breakout room. And one of the questions was, if you had six hours with no COVID-19, what would you do? Mm-hmm. And it was pretty funny people's answers. But one guy was like, sweaty basketball game, you know, like, and it's true, you know, like, I know that every time we have these thoughts to go out for a run or anything, we're like, there's like this counter filter now of like, mm-hmm. if wait, freeze up, that might not be safe. And, and that's like, it's so paralyzing. I just want to like speak to like, how sad I am. I mean, it's, it's, it may be necessary for survival and for what we need to protect one another. Mm-hmm. But how sad it makes me that we can't just go like, after a workout, like, yeah, you know, arm bump or high five, you know, because yeah. there's something to that true vulnerability of like, I was in the trenches with you. I just gave everything and you witnessed it. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's strength in numbers um, that, that, uh, that truly is how group fitness has its power. I think like it's very powerful. You're exactly what you're saying. Like people, people come out of that and go, man, we just went to war together. Like we went to battle. We battled side by side. I saw you out there and uh, it's powerful, you know? And, and then I think for, for me, like, I love the idea of bringing that out to the community. It's like, you know, we just finished a workout together and let's go hit a smoothie and chat in the, in the lobby or let's go grab a coffee or I'll meet you for lunch later. Like there's, there's that element of camaraderie that extends beyond the class. And, you know, even that has been shook and compromised. Um, and that's, yeah, it's, it is sad. It's sad and it's hard to even fathom that that's the reality. It is. I was reflecting on it. I was just walking the other day and I was like, wow, you know, cause we had a, just happened to be, I went from working on skid row and then all of a sudden that was the one gift to myself, uh, mm-hmm. was a 12 o'clock workout class. And we wound up calling it the lunchbox crew. Right. And it's like, mm-hmm. you know, on, on surface level before we walk in the door, we're different backgrounds, totally different you know men women you know like a lot of ego stuff would get in the way Mm -hmm. once you cross through the door it's like whoever's willing to put on their hard hat and bring a lunch pail and do some Mm -hmm. work together and and just not even just in like the old-fashioned like grinding lifting to get strong way but just in the the spirit of creating a new identity creating space for yourself Mm -hmm. um to feel good And what a metaphor that is. So whether it be like, you know, the power of doing morning meditations or gratitude, right? Or or it be getting into some form of Zoom workout, you know, doing something that's for you that's going to help you feel good and how empowering that is to the rest of your life. You know, I know, I know, uh, see why, or, or, you know, in some of your workouts, people are like, just stand there, just, just put your arms up and just scream something. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. so if you can filter out with don't worry what your neighbors are going to think right it's exactly <laughs> exactly well the way we're going everyone can just bake their neighbor a banana bread and call it a day they're like hey listen i'm sorry for all those jumping jacks here's banana bread um i've got lemons in the tree behind me that's my commerce perfect <laughs> lemon poppy seed loaf or something that's what i'm talking about yeah yeah it's uh I mean, I know that the landscape is forever altered. Um, and I say forever loosely, like who knows what five years looks like, but, um, I think that's the part that makes me the most scared and and nervous and, and kind of filled with a little bit of fear is what will that be like next? 
as we enter this next phase of, you know, things shifting again and reopening and some people aren't reopening and some people are waiting and what does that look like? What does the landscape of that look like? You know, can we just stroll into our favorite coffee shop and see someone we know and take a second and linger and catch up? And what is, what does that look like? You know, and I think that that's, that unknownness is something that's always been really hard for me. I like things that I can control and manipulate. And I like those types of challenges, like the small spectrum things within, within a situation you feel rather relatively, you know, comfortable in and confident yeah. in your ability. And this is just something entirely different. Yeah. I mean, on the one hand in my profession as well, right. If I uh, meet with a, a guest or a client, somebody called me about their 13 year old son today, mm. you know, on the one hand, creating a space where someone can come see you is welcoming. On the other hand, if my mouth were covered, everything about how we relate mm -hmm. and all the messages that are coming from our facial muscles, from our, from our smile. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so the ability, and when we cannot read that, that can send the opposite, right? People were like, right. Everyone walking around initially, when you see everyone with a mask, the first yeah. reaction is like, there's a robber. Someone's hiding yeah. something. Right? Yeah. I mean, people, yeah. So, right. There's, there's, there's a lot of that, different that cues. Expensive. Just like, you know, vulnerability, you're right, that's gone, or just openness, transparency that really is eliminated. Yeah, so th then that becomes the new language, like how do we create this and who's open to do it? And so like, does my tribe start small? Does it start mm -hmm. with those that I feel that they trust that I'm gonna not violate that six feet rule and that like, we know mm -hmm. that they're healthy? Like the whole vetting process of safety um seems different like there's a new uh you know kind of and do they pay attention to my signals do they respect mm -hmm. my boundaries mm -hmm. uh, around that so um yeah whole nother whole nother land but i almost went to tears last night when a mother at my daughter's new school said something like don't worry my daughter will be over at your house every day next year and i was like that felt so good just like yeah. having people just coming into your space Mm -hmm. I'm sure I'd be really annoyed after the first two weeks, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, friends stopping by. I mean, you know, yeah. so I know we've, we've made accommodations for now, but in the long run, I'm sure we have to, we're going to have to make some adapting. Um, yes. Yeah. I mean, how do you, how do you feel about, about it? Like, you know, and, and I get, again, this is a can of worms, so feel free to pass the question. But, you know, I, I studied, um, I studied, you know, pathology, not at, not at like a, a doctorate level or even, even close, but I, I studied at pathology in university, biology, biochem, you know, I was very much, and, and my trade was holistic nutrition before it was fitness. And, you know, I, I know enough about the immune system to say is that we are genetically biologically designed and shaped and hardened to be able to come in contact with multiple pathogens. We don't even know what we have come in contact. Today, just you sitting in your home in your backyard, what you have come in contact with. Yes, the risk when you stay in your own space gets smaller and smaller, but still, when you talk about airborne pathogens, like we come in contact with so many things all the time and potentially strains of viruses that haven't mutated to become strong enough to even register on your system. But that doesn't mean that they won't, you know, five, 10 years down the road, who knows, you know, but I know that if I take care of myself and obviously I'm in a, in a very fortunate position that others in some, I'm under 35 years old, I'm healthy. I have no complications. In fact, you know, actually I can't even say that I have some um, some scar tissue on my left lung that actually causes me some, I'm very susceptible to respiratory illnesses from a severe case of pneumonia that I had when I was younger. And I've had pneumonia very, very seriously hospitalized a number of times. Wow. But I know that I can fight it. And I know that I have done the work to be able to fight it and, or fight anything, you know, and there's, so there's this piece of me that goes, that there's the only way that that's, that's how the human immune system works is to come in contact with things and fight them. And yes, I mean, with that comes some survive, some don't. Um, and, and that's like the natural course of how we as a population become stronger. So it's just, it's a very interesting concept, this social distancing to me, because it's kind of the same, I mean, on a very like different level, it's almost the same as, um, I think it was maybe what, 15 
maybe 10, 15 years ago, there was a lot of parents that were, and you could even speak on this more being a parent, um, you know, not wanting their kids to play in the playgrounds and don't eat the dirt and go outside and pump in the hand sanitizer. And there was just this sheltering that actually caused, um, I'd say like an influx in like autoimmune disorders and, and, and kids that didn't have strong enough immune systems because they weren't playing in the dirt licking telephone poles because they got dared to in the middle of winter. <laughs> and, you know, whereas my generation grew up just literally probably eating rocks at the playground. So it, 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 it's interesting to me that I feel like we can walk a tightrope of sheltering the immune system and doing ourselves a disservice. And then at the same time, the other side of that tightrope is doing the logical thing, taking care of your body, making sure you wash your hands in, in an airplane. Should you disinfect your entire seat? Oh yeah, definitely you should disinfect your entire seat. It's, it's logic. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm conflicted with how I feel about it. Yeah, I don't know and thank you for being it. raw about that. I mean, it's hard. You know, there's so many, lang you know, the obligation we have in our profession to uh, ethics and safety and protecting mm -hmm. others and how far that extends. Am I responsible then if my fellow clinician's client comes in and they have a compromised immune system? I see young children. I see the elderly. So, you know, what are you bringing in? What might I have, you know, the uncontrollable nature of, could you have mm. contact with someone who had, uh, did not even know that they had symptoms. So there's, you know, it does raise a lot of fear, but mm -hmm. I can say that before Corona even, right, how much goes into your preventative health? How much mm -hmm. goes into the power of your mind around illness, uh, and fear? Mm. You know, and, and that kind of work and, and uh, the podcast coming out this week with Lyman Good, who's an MMA fighter, who overcame coronavirus. And I was pretty impressed yeah. because he wanted to do it right away because he wanted to say, like, the power of not being afraid. Like, there is something yeah. also to when you do get something, how do you fight it? What spirit do you fight it with? And that's yeah. not to say that the people who are passing suddenly and in five days no. didn't have a wonderful, kind, amazing spirit, uh, Absolutely you know, not. anything like that. So, but I do think, you know, you are getting to something about like, right, at what point does fear, and I think, um, you know, shut us down or prevent us from doing some of the most essential human thing things. And that's, mm. what's, that's what's kind of really spirit crushing right now is that- It is, yeah. Is, is it's that a out of, out of Out of being afraid and protect which could be essential for survival we we're not quite clear um yeah. you know are we going to adapt things that make us healthier are we going to yeah. take are we doing everything within our power to, to control our own health and you know how much do we appreciate the power of human connection and being together because mm -hmm. we all know that people we've been in front of people we're around people all the time we're moving so fast we're not always respecting space and that can create mm -hmm. toxicity too on my work it's the toxicity of your thoughts the way you speak to people can create mm -hmm. Right. You could be the yeah. most fit person ever. And if you're always judging everyone or, you know, speaking about people behind their back, you're creating, you know, you know, negative, you know, pathogens, so to speak, uh, yeah. you know, in terms of people's chemicals and what they feel about themselves. And so yeah. many levels we can take this, but, you know, yeah. uh, John Cabot's in, you know, full, full, full catastrophe living, you know, about the power of the mind. And, and one of the main takeaways, other than learning how to stay fit, even when and using anything, right? Using a flower pot, using a backpack, see why he's got yes. the backpack, you know, is, is mindfulness. Can you sit mm -hmm. still if you were stuck in this chair in my backyard and could you appreciate the squirrels going by and the relationship to nature and the relationship to that, all the different parts of yourself. Um, mm -hmm. And for you, man, put that down on paper. That's powerful stuff. You've got a lot of knowledge, all the nutrition and all the music. I mean, it's just amazing all your, your gifts and it's like, it's hard when we can't work them through because things change suddenly. That's the mm -hmm. hardest part about all of this is not just, and the, you know, like, right. You knew you were coming to a country and it's like, man, this is hard, but I chose it. This, I don't think anybody chose this and we no. were not prepared. And so there's, you know, there's some like work to be done all for all of us emotionally. I'm glad that we're all with it for one another because we yeah. all have the same frame of reference of like, wow you know every one of us went through and for people who changed illness for people who lost income um so uh my you know my last guest Sindra kampoff said the, the gift is to try and make this about somehow that you chose this opportunity right now if you yeah. can try and look at why did you choose this um 
they can, you know, because when you get into a place of victimhood, even though you didn't, you know, you didn't want it, right? Mm -hmm. It leads to a lot of negative feelings and resentment. And then we don't change with it. So, yeah. So every time, you know, (laughs) fear-based living just does nothing. And, and yeah. And, and I think that there's so many lessons from this. And if we really, really look at it, um, personal things like, you know, how we, like you're saying, how we chose to use our time, um, and, and how we chose to reach out to the people around us when we couldn't, it, when it wasn't so convenient to see them all the time. I live in a very convenient social situation. Everyone comes through to me through that door, you know? Right. And so like, how are you choosing to use your time? And, and, you know, we, we only have one, one body in this life. And, um, you know, it's like, at one day we're all going to be seven years old, you know, wishing we had eight more cheesecake and drank more wine or something. But, but at the same time, I think it's, you know, we live, if you, we need to live a good life of balance and know that we're doing everything in our power to make ourselves, to, to increase our fortitude, our physical fortitude, our mental fortitude, our emotional fortitude, um, and not be afraid to lean into those challenges. Um, and I think a lot of that the practice for that and like the, the training grounds, I think you find within fitness. I, I truly do. And the exploration of your nutrition and how you, cause it truly is like how you work out, how you eat does is a reflection of how you feel about yourself. Like on a very deep level, are you willing to commit the time to give to yourself? Even when that gift is a burpee or <laughs> something and it doesn't feel so good. And it's maybe a little bit uh, something you really don't want to do, but you know, it's the right thing to do for yourself. Um, you know, it's the, everything is in that, that power of choice. And, and, yes, uh, and so, I want to say that's a real power of uh, your message and the message of, uh, you know, studio gyms you're working for, you know, that, that this is not about like trying to be, you know, the next, biggest you know strongest weightlifter in the gym that for whatever level you're at or for wherever you are at the time you know it's like finding whatever that inner athlete is within you and um you know that is a totally individual journey to Mm -hmm. allowing yourself to feel good and allowing yourself to feel you can be strong and be mindful of your injury you can be flexible and you can be you know you don't have to give up one for the other uh, so it's not like you have to become a gym, quote unquote, gym person, yes. you know, you know, it's, and it's, and it's about connection. It's not about, you know, just getting connected with a bar and a weight and disconnecting from people. It's, yeah. it's about being healthy. Um, and I thank you for inspiring that message and modeling that message. Thank um, you. yeah. And for being, uh, yeah, fit, strong and not being afraid to, uh, speak your mind. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you uh, having me on here. It was a pleasure. And uh, does that mean I'll get less burpees next time I see you? <laughs> I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go out there and see you get less. I might turn my head to someone else's screen for a couple. Um, but you know, I think uh, I think the idea of what you said with being an inner everyone has that kind of inner athlete, and and that isn't just physical. That's the idea that you know, a commonality with all athletes. And I'm sure you, I maybe agree, disagree, but (laughs) they don't, they don't know how to quit. You know, they won't quit. I have trained people with broken legs that had that athlete spirit that weren't professional athletes that were like, well, I'm not going to quit just because I have a broken leg or because I had a bad day or because of coronavirus or because I can't go to my gym or whatever. So whatever people are facing, being, Mm -hmm. having that, that athlete spirit is understanding that there's, there's no quit. I don't have a quit. Try to find it. You won't. Right on. Well, I know we have to wrap up here, but John Gordon, great book called Training Camp about what happens if you get injured and how you can still keep your head in the game if you're trying to make the team, and that's in sports and in life. But uh, Jenna Finkbeiner, thank you so much. Tell us, please, how to find you and stay in contact uh, for all our listeners who may be Absolutely. inspired by today's show. It would be a pleasure. Uh, right now, easiest way to reach me would be at Jana RHN. The RHN stands for Registered Holistic Nutritionist, actually. Um, but connect with me on Instagram. My website will be launching soon, and that's where the the hub of all things that I'm I'm up to will be will be on that. Perfect. Thank you so much for being a guest. Thanks, Rich. Nice to see you. Thank. You. That was amazing. Gift, a motivator, trainer. I'm thankfully I'm hidden behind a screen today, so I cannot get 
physically pounded. Uh, she's a force to be reckoned with, reckon with, whether it be in the ring uh, with your nutrition counseling uh, or if you're looking to um, get in shape for your next high performance moment. So thank you again, Jenna Finkbeiner. Again, Richard Olberger is a clinical psychologist. If you're needing support in any way, whether it be clinical or performance-based, please check me out, richardlistens.com. And I'm on Instagram at richardlistens, my patreon.com slash richardlistens page to support the show or for advanced content. Thank you, everyone. I'm grateful. I'm Richard Listens, and I'm out.